Hi folks, this is Linear Algebra Quiz 6. We're given a set with two operations and we're asked to determine if it's a vector space or not. So let's take a look at this set V. V is going to be the set of all n by n matrices M so that M times A equals A times M for all n by n matrices A. So another way to describe this is that it's the set of n by n matrices that commute with every other n by n matrix. We know in general multiplication isn't commutative so this is uh, this is a special set of matrices. The operations we're going to have on the things in V usual matrix addition and usual matrix or unusual scalar multiplication. So is V a vector space? Well a, a quick way to show this is to note that V by definition is a subset of a known vector space. V is a subset of the n by n matrices. We know the n by n matrices under the usual addition and scalar multiplication is a vector space. So to show that V is a vector space, what we can do is we can show that V is a subspace. V is a vector space if and only if it's a subspace of the n by n matrices. And how do I show something's a subspace? Well, we can uh, apply the subspace criteria. Number one, V can't be empty. And in particular, we've proven that zero then has to be in V. And the second thing is it has to be closed under linear combinations. So if U and V are in V, and alpha and beta are real numbers, then the linear combination alpha u plus beta v also has to be in v. So it's non-empty and closed under all linear combinations. Okay, so how do we check this? Zero is in v. Well, we have to go back. What's the zero vector for the n by n matrices? It's the n by n zero matrix. We denoted this way. So how do I show something is in V? When I take it times an n by n matrix, it has to be the same as that matrix times it. So what I'm going to do is let A be some fixed but arbitrary choice of matrix in the n by n matrices. So it's some generic n by n matrix. And what I need to compare is the zero matrix times A and then A times the zero matrix. Well, going back to what we did in chapter one, the, the n by n zero matrix times any n by n matrix, well, that's the n by n zero matrix. And if I take an n by n matrix times the n by n zero matrix, I get the n by n zero matrix back. And these are the same. So I've just shown that this holds Uh, for all n by n matrices. And that's what I need to prove that number one holds. Now, to show that number two holds, I have to show that this conditional statement is true. So I have to show that if u and v are two vectors in v, and alpha and beta are two real numbers, then alpha u plus beta v is also in v. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume I have two things in V. So I'm going to assume that I have two matrices. So I'm going to, I'm going to call them B and C. So assume B and C are in V and alpha and beta are real numbers. What do I need to show? I need to show that this guy is in V. And how do I show that guy is in V? I have to show that if I take that matrix times any other matrix is the same as taking the matrix and uh, the matrix product in the opposite order. Okay? So let's write out a little more clearly what does B and C being in V give us? Then B times A equals A times B and c times a equals a times c for all n by n matrices a.
what I need to show is that alpha b plus beta c acts the same way. So let's compute alpha b plus beta c times some generic matrix A. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to just let A be some fixed but arbitrary n by n matrix. And i got to compute this matrix times A and see if I can reverse the order. Well, using the distributive property, this is alpha B times A plus beta C times A. Using the associative property, that's alpha times BA plus beta times CA. Now I'll use the fact that both B and C are in V. That means I can reverse the order of multiplication here. Oops. And now I'm going to use properties of scalar multiplication to move the scalars into where I want them to be. And now I'll use distributive property once again and quote unquote factor out the A. So what have I shown? I've shown that alpha B plus beta C times A is the same as alpha B plus beta C. What's that tell me? The matrix alpha B plus beta C is also in V. It commutes with all the other matrices as well. That's our second condition. So hence, V is a subspace of this guy, of this vector space, and so V is a vector space then in its own right. All the other conditions of being a vector space are taken care of because we've already proved this guy's a vector space. That'll do it then for quiz six.